Hey everyone, it's Justin again. In this lesson, you're going to learn all about the circle vocabulary you're going to be using in this unit. This lesson has two videos. This first video explains some general vocabulary related to circles, and the next video explains some vocabulary related to angles and arcs within circles. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify parts of a circle and use correct notation. First, we'll define some general vocabulary terms related to circles, and then you'll have time to fill in your notes template and mini dictionary before moving on to the second video of this lesson. Let's begin our vocabulary lesson with the shape that's responsible for this entire unit, the circle. A circle is a two-dimensional figure whose boundary consists of all points that are equidistant from a given point. Here's a given point, point R, and here is a circle that has point R as its center. We can use a compass to verify that all the points on the circle are in fact the same distance from the center by keeping the compass setting the same and making an entire rotation along the circle. And while working on paper, using a compass will make drawing your own circles way easier. The distance between both tips of the compass is also known as the radius of the circle. The radius is the distance between the circle's center and any point on its circumference. In this circle, we can say that segment RP is a radius. We can draw in a radius anywhere we want to as long as one end point of the radius contains the center and the other end point is on the circumference, like segment RU or segment RQ. Our circle now has three radii drawn in. And since two of them, RP and RQ, form a straight line segment, this leads us into our next term, a diameter. We can say that segment QP is a diameter because it has endpoints on the circle and it passes through the center of the circle. A diameter contains two radii and is a specific type of chord. What's a chord, you ask? A chord is defined as any segment with endpoints on the circle. Diameters are a special type of chord that always goes through the center, but any segment connecting two points on the circumference of the circle will work. We could say that segment SP is a chord too. Can you think of another chord we could draw that uses two of the points shown? If you said segment SQ would also be a chord, that's right. But if you said SR, this would not be correct since both endpoints of the segment SR are not on the circumference of the circle. Go back through the terms we've already talked about to refresh your memory. What does segment SR represent? SR is a radius since one of its endpoints is the center of the circle and the other is on the circle. All right, let's zoom out a little here so we can talk about something called concentric circles. These are circles that share a center, but have different radii. So here's the circle we've been working with this whole time. We can call it circle R, since we name circles based on their center. But when I draw in a concentric circle, it would also be called circle R, since it has the same center. But wait a second, they can't just have the same name, how will people know which one we're talking about? Hmm. How do you think we can differentiate between these two circles with different names? Does this spark any ideas? We can name them based on their center and radius. So the bigger circle here can be called R with radius PR, and the smaller circle can be called circle R with radius TR. There can be many concentric circles with the same center, so it's super important to have a way to differentiate between them. We just went over using some general circle vocabulary that you'll be using in this unit. 
Be sure to finish filling in your notes template for these terms and your mini dictionary if you've chosen to fill that in as you go through the lessons. Then you can move on to the second video of this lesson, which will explain vocabulary related to angles and arcs within circles. I'll see you again very soon. Hey.